Beer is an alcoholic drink made by fermenting a solution containing sugar through the addition of yeast. That's how a scientist sees it, but beer is so much more. It's enjoyment, it's sociability, and it's a living tradition. It's a substance that gives much cause for celebration. For around 9,000 years, beer has been a food and a cult drink. Today, beer is facing a transition to a new beer culture. Very different types and styles have developed and they're all being nurtured in their own way. But what happened right in the beginning? Brewing was originally a woman's job. Beer was an important part of the diet, and women brewed the beer. Basically, beer consists of the following, as stipulated in the German purity law exactly 500 years ago. Barley malt, hops, and water. It wasn't really known at the time that beer also needs yeast. It's possible to brew beer or beer-like drinks from any starting product that contains starch, but this film is about the classic barley product. The barley provides the starch that's indispensable for the fermentation process. Before brewing can begin, the barley has to be malted. The barley corn is basically a seed. As such, it needs an energy store for germination. Plants always use starch as this energy store, and this starch is broken down during the germination process through enzymes such as amylase. Once broken down, this starch turns into saccharides, dextrines and maltose. Maltose is a disaccharide consisting of two glucose molecules. The germination process is complete after five days. Depending on the temperature during the germination process, we can influence the quality of the malt. The green malt is dried at different temperatures and various stages. The temperature and different lengths of time are what give each malt its particular qualities. You can make a rough distinction between light and dark malt. If the temperatures are higher, you get additional roasting aromas, and if you're making dark malt, they produce flavor nuances and intensities. As when we fry or bake something, the malt's coloring and intensity of flavor are produced by the Maillard reaction. During the heating process, the malt's water content is reduced from more than 45% after germination to around 4% at the end of the 20-hour process. Around 100 grams of malt are needed for one half litre of beer. And for that, 0.4 square metres of agricultural land are needed to grow the barley. Around 185,000 tonnes are malted every year. That's nowhere near enough to supply all the beer fans in Austria with native Austrian beer. Our diagram depicts a special micro-malting works at the Wildshut beer estate near Salzburg. A well-known brewery has its speciality beers malted and brewed here using old recipes. The collectively run brewery of this small beer town in Upper Styria only uses Austrian products. In such a picturesque setting, it's no surprise that there are very innovative ways of demonstrating both independence and a connectedness to one's surroundings. A well-known image for every beer lover, the brew house of a medium-sized brewery. This is where the malt is mixed with the water from the company's own well, it can be quite a noisy process. In the brew house, the heart of the brewery, we break down our brewing malt and then we mix it with our brewing water. 
gefrotet, sagt der Brauer dazu, wird dann mit Brauwasser vermischt. Next, it's mashed. We have to stick to exact temperatures so that our naturally occurring enzymes can break down the starch into maltose. This maltose is then turned into alcohol, carbon dioxide and heat by the yeast. This mashing process lasts around three and a half hours. After the subsequent refining process, the hops are added, an important aspect of giving beer its typical flavour and shelf life. Every master brewer has his own method. It's rare for freshly harvested hops to be used. To keep the quality consistent, most breweries use hop pellets. They're applied not by weight, but by alpha acid level. That's what defines how much the finished beer tastes of hops. Hops contain a lot of natural essential oils. These essential oils are volatile. If you take these hops after the harvest and you grind them and press them, you get the essential oils in the hops. Just half a gram of hops gives one glass of beer its typical flavor. That corresponds to around five freshly harvested hop flowers. Hops have been growing in significance again recently. There are some breweries that have always placed a lot of emphasis on the hops, such as the Zipfer brewery, which always used real hop flowers, not hop products. They always stuck with that. Hops are added to give the beer a bitterness and a certain flavour. That varies from beer to beer. There are types of beer where the hops are prominent, such as pale ales and India pale ales. These beers can be really very interesting. But in my opinion, you have to keep a balance. You don't want to clobber it with hops. The fragrant aromas and bitter substances in the hops are isolated during the boiling process under very specific temperatures. The right temperature at the right time is what produces the typical beer flavour. You add the hops at the start and end of the boiling process. They're the seasoning the brewer uses, his salt and pepper. At the start of the brewing process, we add the bitter hops, and at the end, we add the fine aroma hops. As in the malting process, controlling the temperature throughout the approximately one-hour boiling process is one of the main secrets of the master brewers. Some breweries are experimenting. They have a gentler approach and see many advantages in using innovative low-temperature systems, a bit like district heating. One of the biggest successes of our switchover to a low temperature is that we're completely carbon neutral in our production. We save 750,000 litres of heating oil and no longer release 1,900 tonnes of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. We've been able to reduce our primary energy requirements by around 36%. That's a fair amount for a medium-sized business. But however the boiling process takes place, for chemists, the process always follows the same pattern. Four important processes take place in the boiling vat. The amylase is deactivated, bacteria are killed to avoid improper fermentation later, proteins are precipitated and water is evaporated. This process is continued until the desired original gravity is achieved. The senior brewer and his team are responsible for the right content of original wort. To guarantee a consistent quality, it's checked and measured several times. Put simply, the original wort defines the maltose content and therefore the future alcohol content of the beer. The precipitation, the removal of the protein particles and other residue, 
and the cooling of the wort largely takes place in closed systems today. In the past, the wort was poured into a wort chiller. The last of its kind is operational in a monastic brewery in Salzburg. On the way from the wort chiller to the fermentation vats, the last but nevertheless important ingredient is added. Yeast. It's the yeast that turns the wort into beer. Yeast is a living organism. It's a fungus. This fungus is capable of metabolizing the maltose and turning it into alcohol. For that to happen, the maltose has to be broken down into its last two components, glucose. One molecule of glucose becomes two molecules of alcohol, ethanol, as the chemists say, and two molecules of carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide is what gives beer its foam. We distinguish two different types of yeast, top yeast and bottom yeast. Top yeasts are happy at 15 to 20 degrees, bottom yeasts at 5 to 10 degrees. In most breweries, beer ferments in closed vats. The young beer is funneled into these vats via a clever system of pipes. Here in Murau, every fermentation vat can hold around 102,000 litres of beer. The pressure and temperature in the vats are constantly optimised depending on the fermentation stage. In this controlled setting, the yeast has ideal conditions to do its work over a period of around seven days. After the fermentation process is complete, the yeast is isolated, prepared and returned to the in-house yeast culture. That's only been possible since Louis Pasteur and other pioneers discovered and researched pure strains of yeast. Before that time, it's not that long ago, and the tradition of brewing beer is much older, brewing was often hit and miss. Yeasts are naturally present in the air. There are wild yeasts. But as a result, the master brewer's work wasn't always successful. With this new knowledge about yeast, a master brewer from Vienna revolutionized brewing in the small town of Schwechat. He invented Vienna Lager. The Vienna Lager Vienna Lager is an Austrian innovation that has spread around the world. Anton Dreher, the owner of the Schwerhardt Brewery and a master brewer, developed this new beer and managed to spread this type of beer all over the world. It was more common in Anton Dreher's day to work with top yeast. But the Vienna Lager used bottom yeast, and that produced a new, better flavour. Together with the development of automatic cooling by Karl von Linde, this was the innovation that made it possible for beer of a consistent quality to be enjoyed throughout the entire year. The private brewery in Obertum is pursuing a new interpretation of the traditional open fermentation process. The beer here brews in patented open vats. That makes the whole thing a little more complicated, but it gives the drink a unique character. In open fermentation, you get this wonderful foam on the fermenting wort. This foam gets orange-brown particles during the fermentation process. These particles are resins, bitter substances, colorings from the malt, parts of the hops that are very bitter and impure. Through open fermentation, we're able to remove this foam and therefore remove the negative ingredients. That makes our beers particularly mild and digestible. 
They stimulate you to drink up, and that's a particular mark of quality for us. In addition, the open fermentation process does something to the beer. We have no pressure. That means the yeast is treated very gently in the vats and can unfold freely. It's important that we check on this living thing every day and make sure the yeast is fine. But it's not just about appearances. In every brewery, exactly determined procedures are followed to determine the beer's microbiological condition during the brewing, fermenting and maturing processes. A new trend has emerged among brewers and connoisseurs in recent years. Beer specialities. The everyday term is craft beers. The master brewer's creativity is given free reign here. These beers are even being sold in barrels now. Ganz besondere Spezialitäten. Very special beers, strong beers with an alcohol content of more than 7-8% that have spent two years maturing slowly at below zero degrees, are moved to these wooden barrels where they're finished off. The beers draw the aromas from the wood. We have a variety of timbers from German oak and American oak. We have barrels that previously had wine in them from French vineyards. And these strong beers draw out these flavors. And of course, they give off flavors to the barrels, too. It's easy to imagine how such aromatic compositions would be pleasing to the palate. A traditional location near Hallein approaches the production of speciality beers differently. Not least because the much quoted purity law is interpreted a little differently in Austria. The Austrian Food and Drink Code now contains a chapter called Creative Beers. It describes in detail what we're allowed to do. We're allowed to add honey and we're also allowed to add chestnuts. There's a large number of different malts, not least because of the different grain types. There are different yeasts and different brewing methods, different types of hops. When you put all that together, you have a huge spectrum of outcomes. By emphasizing the special features, we're winning over new fans in addition to the beer enthusiasts Austria has always had. We're winning over wine drinkers and women in particular. Beer is being talked about a bit more again. That does more justice to the status of beer. Beer glasses are getting smaller and the number of varieties and target groups is growing. But never mind how traditional or niche the beer is, it has to mature for a few weeks after fermenting. And after that, it's usually filtered. In order to reach the connoisseurs, it has to be filled into a barrel. The elaborate filling process always takes place in the same way regardless of whether it's a small quantity or 60,000 cans per hour. Returned bottles are sterilized with hot water and steam. Medium-sized and big breweries in particular work with these bottles. It takes another hour from the moment the returned bottle is on the conveyor belt until it can be filled with new life.
before filling, the container, regardless of whether it's a bottle, can or barrel, is pre-treated with carbon dioxide. An oxygen-free atmosphere is produced at a pressure of around 3.2 bars. This prevents unwanted chemical reactions while the container is closed. This way, every beer maintains its special character until the moment it's drunk. Beer has the largest variety. There's a huge spectrum of colors, from the lightest yellow, golden yellow, oranges and reddish, all the way to brown and the deepest black. And the same is true for the variety of flavors. I can brew the sweetest beer, the sourest beer and the bitterest beer. It's all possible. The alcohol content also varies widely. Nothing is so diverse as beer. Thank you.